Welcome back to the J and J Show. I'm Jake, and I'm Jason. And today we're joined by Kyle, fellow Panda member and sophomore <laughs> from Smith Station High School. We have a lot of topics today, a little bit of college, a lot of NFL. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start it off with the Heisman. It's being announced tomorrow, and there's really only two people left in this. Vegas has Kyler beating out Tua. But what do you think about this one, Jason? Um, I think Vegas is well. First of all, don't I never really take anything based on what Vegas says. Um, you know, obviously Tua didn't have a great game against Georgia this past weekend. He got hurt in the fourth quarter. And he had like 160 some yards and one touchdown. But let's not forget that Kyler has also had one bad game. And it was actually against an Army defense. He only had, he had no touchdowns, 160 some yards, and one interception. So, and Tua's played great the entire season. So I think that Tua can still win this Heisman, even though he had one bad game against Georgia this past weekend. Kyle, what do you think? Well, Jake did say that there's two people left in the Heisman race, which is, in my opinion, false. Even though I'm not a giant fan of Urban Meyer or Dwayne Haskins, I think Dwayne Haskins has a very good chance of winning this Heisman race. But I, I would have to give it to Kyler Murray. I do love the SEC, and I think the SEC defense will surely shock Kyler Murray. But if we're talking about how he, what quarterback played the best during the season – I think Colin Murray was the most electric player I've seen this year. I totally agree with that. Uh, Kyler passed Tua after that last game, and Jason, you mentioned that uh, you thought Kyler had a bad game, but it wasn't really a bad game. He only had 15 attempts, and he still hit, he only had 15 attempts, and he completed 11 of them. 100. You know why he only had 15 attempts, right? Why? Because Army hogs the football. Army is a triple option team that runs the ball all every single play. They run. They get four to five yards each play. So, obviously, he's not going to get a bunch of passing attempts because he doesn't have the ball that much. Yeah, but in Tua's bad game, he went 10 for 25. Kyler went 11 because, for 15. That's because that he bad. had the ball more than him. Yeah, and also, Tua threw one touchdown, two interceptions. In Kyler's bad game, he threw two, three touchdowns, one interception. That's not a bad game, in my opinion. Against Army. It's not as bad as Tua's game. And I know they played, they Georgia. played a better team. They played a better team, but if I – had a football team, I would want Kyler as my quarterback over Tua. But he's n- – Tua – Kyler isn't playing any defenses. That's, like That might be true, but I still think Kyler's going to win this one out because one pretty bad game from Tua means a lot. One bad game and you're out of a race. Just like Drew Brees, after one bad game against the Cowboys, he lost it to Patrick Mahomes. That's it. He had one bad game, and you, now Patrick Mahomes is probably going to win the MVP. Yeah, and you don't think you can catch that back up? Probably not, unless – are you talking about Patrick Mahomes? Drew Brees. Yeah, unless Patrick Mahomes does something stupid, I don't think Drew Brees can catch back up. But this is the Heisman, this and Heisman. I think Kyler's going to win it. I, I still think Tua's going to win it. I don't think anyone else. Is, I don't think Dwayne Haskins has yeah, a chance. He's going to finish third. Or Will Greer, but if one of them goes up there and win it, I'll be in shock. I don't honestly. think Will Greer. I don't even think Will Greer got the invite. Yeah, but we're going to move on to Kelly Bryant. He picked Missouri. How do you feel about that, Jason? Missouri, I think. Uh, I think he made a great choice. I think, um, you know, Missouri always has a pretty electric offense. They always have pretty good wide receivers. They all can run. They all can catch and um, remove. They they all play pretty well. <laughs> Missouri's receivers are pretty good. Kelly Bryant, I think he'll be a good fit for when they don't. For when they don't get open, he can just take off and run. I think he's he'll be a good dual threat quarterback over in Missouri. I think uh, I think he didn't pick Auburn, which kind of surprised me. I think he didn't pick Auburn because there's always a lot of is Gus even going to stay or not? Be good next year? Are even they are they even going to be good at all? So I think Kelly Bryant made a good choice with picking Missouri. You know, really, the decision between Missouri and Auburn was, you know, 50-50. There's a lot of pros to one team. There's a lot of cons to one team. You know, a con to Missouri is, historically, they haven't been that good. And also, they are losing some talent this year with number one receiver. I believe Emmanuel Hall is to be going to the draft this year. But I believe one reason he did pick uh, – he, he picked Missouri because of Auburn is because Missouri plays in the East, which usually – is not that good compared to you know the west with alabama and 
Auburn, Texas A&M. You know, they have good teams down there, which usually the SEC East isn't the best in the world. You know, maybe they have Kentucky may be good, Georgia may be good. But, you not know, the same. Not as many competitive teams. Hmm? Not as many competitive yes, teams. Yes, not really as competitive, which could help his draft stock, you know, come up because he still is playing in the SEC. Yeah, he is still playing in the SEC, but I feel like Missouri throws a lot more than some other teams would, like like Auburn and um, Arkansas, which was one of his options too. Um, I think he can showcase his arm here more than he could have anywhere else, uh, Auburn or Miami, which those places might be more competitive this year, Auburn or Miami. But Missouri, I just feel like he can showcase his skill and his talent a lot more to get ready for the draft. So I think he made the best choice. You know, I do too, even though I do believe – like system wise, I believe he would have fit in very good with Auburn's system mm-hmm. with Gus Malzahn. But you know, there's always a question of is Gus going to be there? Uh, what kind of what are we going to do this year? And it's just a lot of drama surrounding Auburn right now, anyway. So I think he made a good decision, anyway. Yeah, me too. But we're going to move on to Ohio State. Is Urban Meyer really done? You know, how do you feel about his retirement? Um, Urban Meyer retired. Seven, eight years ago from Florida, he retired in quotation marks, but he retired from Florida ten, about eight years ago, and then he came back all of a sudden to Ohio State, and he won one national championship with Ohio State. He's gone. He has a great record there. Um, is Urban Meyer done? Uh, I hear he has some health problems. I... I wouldn't be surprised if he came back and went to another good school and coached there for a couple of years. But I think Urban Meyer, I think he's done this time, done for good. He's done coaching, I believe. Wait, before Kyle goes, do you know why he retired from Florida? Did he – do you know why? I think um, – Because I thought he also said health problems. He might have. So, so – I don't know. He has gotten a lot older, of course, but – this could be true this time. It could be not true this time again. He could come back. I'd say it's about 50-50, but Kyle, what do you think? Well, you know, <clears throat> things got crappy when he played for Florida. There were uh, some certain things in the mix that were going on, and there was a lot of drama surrounding them. It's pretty much what's happening with Ohio State right now yeah. with, uh, you know, a lot of with that assistant coach coming out and saying about his a little affair with another woman with a wife. And – Urban Meyer apparently has known about this the entire time and has repeatedly denied the fact of this. And I honestly believe the same thing's going to happen where he retires and just goes to a different team. So uh, do you think that he actually has health problems or do you think he's just trying to get out of a bad situation? I mean, really, I'm not going to lie, coaching, it, it, it involves a lot of stress for calling games and knowing if, whether you're going to have a job or not. But, I mean, maybe that could be in the mix. But, but realistically, if we're going off history here, I believe he's just trying to get out of Ohio State right now. Yeah, I could see him going somewhere else that's competitive again, and his name will be a lot more clean there. Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Do you have anything else to add, Jason? Uh, no, let's okay. move on. So we're going to move on to our last college football topic, Playoff expansion. Uh, this has been a big topic for a while now. Uh, people think there should be more than four teams. What do you think about this, Jason? I think I believe that you should keep it the same as four teams because if you start expanding the playoffs, you make it a lot easier for teams to not have to work as hard during the regular season because you start making it seem like the NFL where you can get two losses in the NFL, two, three losses, and you're seeded one. But if you get two, three losses in college football, you're out. So I think I think they should keep it the same. I like it at four teams right now. Maybe if it seems like over ten years it's still repetitive of the same four teams getting in every year, maybe they change it. But I like it with just the four teams they have right now. Kyle? I see what Jason's try- was saying in this, but really, if you were to expand the college football playoffs to, say, an eight, uh, an eight, uh, 18 playoffs, you would have to cut around some of the bigger bowl games, which would cost a cup, you know, some money. But, I mean, there is a lot of teams, arguably, especially this year and last year, 
that could or should have gone to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Georgia is the second best team in the nation. But they did lose to LSU and Alabama, who was the toughest two teams on their schedule, which can't go to the playoffs because of that, which I understand why they're not. But in my opinion, they're still the second best. Now, with an uh, eight-seed playoff team, you could even give teams like UCF, who I'm not the biggest fan in the world of, but, I mean, they have been winning, and you can't count that against them. They could, You could give them a chance, and you could give a lot of teams like Ohio State Michigan a mm-hmm. chance again. Mm-hmm. Last year, Auburn could have been in it. Um, and so I think that eight team would be the best option. I agree with Kyle. And I do see where you're coming from, Jason, but uh, this year we could have seen Ohio State and Georgia and UCF in the playoffs, but now they had to make a tough decision and put Oklahoma in over Georgia when both of them had a great have a great chance to win it. And it kind of sucks because last year the same thing kind of happened. If Alabama was kept out, they obviously were good enough to win it because they won it. But what if they were kept out last year? Okay, but I believe that it's hard for a team with two losses to get in because, you know, you have two losses instead of one. Oklahoma, they went 12-1, and one and they avenged their only loss, so they're basically undefeated. Um, Alabama, they didn't lose. Clemson didn't lose. Notre Dame, they have wins over top-ranked teams, which is, I guess, that sealed their spot. So then they didn't lose at all. If Notre Dame, if Notre Dame takes one loss at all in the schedule they have, I believe they're out. And Oklahoma's up three, up in the third spot, and Georgia's in the fourth spot. And you leave Ohio State out. So, you know, I just think it's all in how you, how it all plays out. Because if you end up with two losses and a conference champion only has one loss then they're going to put the conference champion in over the team with two losses. Even if the team with two losses went head-to-head with the team, the conference champion with one loss, they would probably win. Like Georgia, this Georgia-Oklahoma situation, I believe that Georgia could go beat Oklahoma on a neutral field. So it just, all just depends on how it plays out. But a two-loss team can't get in right now. Yeah. I see what you're saying there, but – I mean, even the two lost teams, it leaves room for, like, a little bit of a Cinderella story. Kind of yeah. like uh, Auburn last year. Uh-huh. You know, they had two early losses to LSU and Clemson. Even though the LSU game was a close game, Clemson, it wasn't the best in the world, but it was not a blowout. But guess who went on to beat two number one teams back-to-back weeks? The Auburn Tigers, uh-huh. which left them kind of like a Cinderella story. Who got in into the play? Season. The, yes. And then they got to the SEC championship, and I'm not going to lie, they choked. They pro- they could have gone to the playoffs, but they didn't. But it leaves room for Cinderella stories like that to happen. And it's not like the two losses were bad either. Clemson and LSU? Well, I mean, LSU wasn't the best team in the world last year, but Clemson was definitely a great team. Yeah. Uh, I do like the eight-man playoff. Uh, and you said teams wouldn't have to work as hard, but teams would still work as hard as possible to be ranked higher. And also, I think that there might only be one or two two-loss teams in an eight-man playoff, if any. Some years there might not be any. Like this year, there would only be one, and that would be Georgia. Because UCF would be in it. They don't have a loss. Oklahoma, or Ohio State would be in it. They, don't, they only have one loss. I don't know who the eighth spot would be this year. Maybe Michigan? Uh, if it was to be an eight-seed playoff team, it would be uh, Alabama, and then it would be Notre Dame, Clemson, Oklahoma, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and then UCF would be the eight teams in the playoffs. Yeah, so there's two teams with two losses. And some years, there might not be any teams with two losses. So I don't think the not work as hard statement is necessarily true. But do you have anything else to add, Jason? It's not that they're not working as hard. It's just that they're not having to do as much necessarily is what I'm trying to say. They're not having to do as much. Because you can take two losses and still find a way to sneak in. Whereas, like, the top three teams in the playoffs are all undefeated, and there's only one one loss conference champion who basically went undefeated because they beat the team that beat them. So, I don't know. Maybe they expand it. Maybe they don't. Probably yeah, not like, anytime soon. Well, not in the next few years because it, it's not going to happen – in the next couple of years, it'll happen in a few years, a few years down the road. But let's move on to NFL. Um, we got a few games to pick. We're going to start off with Texans at Colts. Jason, what do you think? 
Um, the Texans have rattled off nine straight wins. They started off with uh, they started off with three losses, and they've rattled off nine straight wins. The Colts <laughs> just got shut out by the Jaguars last weekend, so uh, I'm gonna go Texans in this game. You know, like Jason said, the the Texans have won nine straight, but I don't know. I feel like they Colts did just get shut out by the Jaguars. But they got a fire under them. They got a really good rookie in Darius Leonard. Mm -hmm. Andrew Luck has been playing lights out this year with T.Y. Hilton. And I could I could see an upset happening this week. I'm going Colts. Yeah, whenever I picked this game, I almost went with Colts. Andrew Luck has been playing out of his mind. Darius Leonard is looking like one of the top contenders for defensive rookie of the year. Or even rookie of the year. Um, and they did just lose 0-6 to, to the Jags, who are not very good this year. But I think the Texans are more rounded, well-rounded team. Uh, Watson and Hopkins might be the best quarterback wide receiver duo, one of the best. Um, and they do have a great defense. Um, I think they'll shut down Luck and they'll outscore the Colts. I think that's what's going to happen. Even though, And they have one nine in a row. That'll make it ten. So we're now we're going to move on to Vikings at Seahawks. What do you think, Jason? Uh, Vikings at the Seahawks. You know, Russ... Ever since the Legion of Boom has sort of dismantled over these past few years, the Seahawks haven't been the same. The Seahawks really haven't been the same since uh, they threw the football when they should have ran it on a fourth and one, which uh, if they give it to beast mode, they win the football game. But anyways, that was that was a few years ago, so it doesn't really matter now. Uh, the Seahawks haven't been the same. The Vikings are 6-5-1 and one right now. The Seahawks are 7-5-0. and oh. It's a really tight uh, wild card race right now. I'm a, I'm gonna go with the Seahawks in this one. Seahawks somehow pull it together. Seahawks win this football game. You know, in my opinion, this this game right here is the game between the biggest disappointment this year and the biggest surprise would be in mm -hmm. the Seahawks because everyone thought last year when they lost Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor retired, Earl Thomas is hurt. I mean, Bobby Wagner's still playing great. But, you know, the Legion of Boom has been disassembled. But Russell Wilson's been playing great. Now we look at the Vikings, great wide receiver core, great tight end. You know, the line isn't the best in the world, but they have, you know, two decent running backs. And then Kirk Cousins, who is a very good quarterback. And then you look on the defensive side of the ball, and they have a very good defense. Now, on, the, on, on paper, that sounds like a Super Bowl contending team. But, I mean, I don't know what's just happening with them. It's just like they fall apart every game. So I have the Seahawks taking this just because they're definitely a very consistent team. Yeah, the Seahawks were one of the biggest surprises after it looked like they were going into a rebuild last year when they sold off a lot of their good players. Um, Carson and Penny, their running backs have been playing great. Uh, Wilson has pl been playing great as usual. And the Vikings have been kind of a disappointment. They were expected to go as far as the Super Bowl this year, and the Seahawks were – projected to be left out of the playoffs and it's looking like that could be swapped the Vikings aren't very good at scoring big points and they do still have a good D but I think the Seahawks will outscore them outscore the Vikings and their D will do just enough to stop them I have the Seahawks winning this game and so next this is a good game I think in my opinion Rams at Bears at Soldier Field at Bears all right so the Rams they have a great offense they're 11 and 1 right now uh the Rams I don't think they're going to be stopped by the Bears. The Bears have a great defense this year, but I don't think the Bears are going to stop them. Rams put up 30 to 40 points a game, and if the Bears can't put up that many points as them, I think the Rams win it easy. Rams. Rams. I don't, I don't think there's anything I should even say about this. Rams. All right, so I have the upset on this one. I know it's easy to go with the Rams, and the Rams are a phenomenal team, and I think they'll – probably go to the Super Bowl. They're going to go very deep in the playoffs this year, but I have the upset because the Bears have one of the best defenses this year, um, and they've shown they can score points. Mitch Trubisky is coming back, and I think if they can keep the Rams under 30 points, or under 30 to 25 points, I think that the Bears can can win this if they keep the Rams relatively low scoring. Um, so I think this will be a good game, and it is at the Bears field. I'm calling for the upset. I'm going with the Bears. And next, we have Ravens-Chiefs, another good game. Defense versus offense. What do you think, Jason? Uh, Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes is right now the hottest player in college football. Not college, in the NFL right now. He's one of the hottest players in football right now. Uh, I don't think the Ravens stop that at all. 
Uh, I'm going to go Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, Ravens, they're playing great football right now. And, you know, so is the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes has been playing amazing this year. You know, I don't think anyone was expecting it. But, you know, with the loss with the Kareem Hunt, that's going to hurt them a lot. And, you know, they did sign C.J. Anderson, which is going to be, I think, a very big pickup for them. But, I don't know. I could see the Ravens winning this game just because of how good their defense is. Lamar Jackson's been playing great. Mm-hmm. But realistically, I think Mahomes lights it up again. The Ravens, uh, Lamar Jackson, the Ravens quarterback, has gotten 90 rush yards a game the past three games. He's He just started starting over uh, Flacco. Lamar Jackson has started the past three games, and he's won the past three games. He averages 90 rushing yards a game, and the Ravens are consistently scoring 30 points every game. And uh, this, never mind, keep going. And this defense, uh, I think it can shut the Chiefs down. I think the Chiefs will drop to three losses after this game. It is at Chiefs, but I have the Ravens taking this one. And the Chiefs have shown that they can score low points against good defenses. They scored very low against the Broncos, and they scored very low against the Cardinals. So I guess we'll just have to see what happens. I think the Ravens can hold this one out and win this football game. And lastly, we have the Eagles at Cowboys. What do you think? Uh, Cowboys beat the Eagles 27-20 to 20, uh, three weeks ago. Uh, because the Eagles are in a tight wild card race right now, I think the Eagles come out with fire right now to try and find a way to win this football game. I'm going to go Eagles. Uh, the, the Eagles have been just a big mess the entire year. Mm-hmm. You know, the running game has just been terrible. Carson Wentz has just not been playing like Carson Wentz. I mean, this is not the same team we saw last year who took it to Tom Brady. I mean, then you look on the Cowboys' side, they have very good young pieces. They have Amari Cooper. They have Ezekiel Elliott. Dak Prescott's been playing pretty good the last few games. And then their linebackers, uh, Leighton Vander. Oh, man, I don't even know how to Leighton say his Van name. Yes. Yeah, you got and then Jalen Smith. Mm-hmm. And then they have a very good uh, safety slash cornerback in Byron Jones. So I'm going to go Cowboys this game. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I'm always going to go Cowboys. Yeah, we know. The Eagles, uh, I think last year they just got hot at the right time. They were just hot for most of the year, and they did good. That can happen. It's happened before in every sport. Teams can get hot and go all the way. I think that's what happened. I don't think they're as good as people say they are or or as people think that they are. But the Cowboys, on the other hand, it is is at Jerry's World. It's at uh, AT AT&T Stadium. Uh, the Cowboys have a better defense, and they have an amazing trio with Dak, Amari, and Zeke, uh, with Cole on the side. Um, I think they have the best duo in defense, LVE and Jalen Smith, with Sean Lee on the sideline cheering them on. But actually, I think Sean Lee's coming back this week, and that'll make that linebacker core even better. I have the Cowboys winning this game. It might be a defensive game. It might be an offensive game. Either way, I think the Cowboys can win it. So next, we're going to go on to the NFL awards. Who do you think is going to win MVP this year? I think Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, that's like I said earlier, is one of the best quarterbacks. He's been lighting it up the entire season. I think Patrick Mahomes gets MVP. Okay. You know, I'm going to go Mahomes here too. Even though it's just so weird to say that about a second-year player, I'm going to go Mahomes. Me too. Mahomes has been playing lights out. Drew Brees probably had the lead until that awful loss to the Cowboys. And I don't think Drew Brees can catch back up. As much as I love Drew Brees, I think Mahomes is going to take this one. So next we have Rookie of the Year. Who do you think, Jason? Uh, I'm not really sure about this one. It could go Baker Mayfield. It could go Nick Chubb. It could go Sonny Michelle. It could really go anywhere. I don't know if it goes to any defensive players. Cause does it? Do they do it, offensive? It it, it's really hard. It's mostly offense. It's most, Just it's, like MVP is... Yeah, I think it's always been offense. It's usually mostly offense. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Baker Mayfield rattles off a couple late game wins and somehow sneaks himself a rookie of the year. You never okay. know. You know, I, I I would argue with Baker, but after that terrible game he played last week, I think he threw inter- three interceptions. I'm gonna go Derwin James here, even though he is a defensive player. He has been killing it. He is the number one rookie in this draft class, in my opinion, and I think he deserves to win this. It is really hard for defensive players to win awards where offensive players are also up for that award. But I could definitely see Derwin James or Denzel Ward going for this award. Um, Or even Leighton Van Der Esch or Darius Leonard. But I think it's between Barkley and Mayfield. I really like Mayfield, and after they got rid of their coach, he's done phenomenal. 
Um, both of them aren't on the best teams, but I think if Baker does good the end of the stretch uh, for the rest of the year, I think Baker can win this one. So what do you think about Offensive Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year? These are our last two awards. Drew Brees, Offensive Player of the Year. He, he goes off for the rest of these last few games. Drew Brees, he's already broken a co broke Peyton Manning's passing yards record. Uh, you know, Drew Brees. Okay. Defensive player, what do you think? Defensive player, uh, I'm going to stick with my safe bet and go with Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, you know, for offensive player and defensive player of the year, I have Gurley. I mean, he hasn't had the best, the best last maybe two game stretch, but he's been lighting it up. I believe he's about 150 yards ahead of second place in rushing. He scored a touchdown, touchdown of almost every game, and I have him win an offensive player of the year. Now, defensive player, I have Aaron Donald. He has in his position, I believe he has 8.5 sacks more than second place. That is insane. Yeah, that is that is pretty crazy. Aaron Donald's a great player, and uh, so is Drew Brees and Todd Gurley. Um, Drew Brees and Todd Gurley are my two Offensive Player of the Year candidates. I think I'd go with Todd Gurley on this one, uh, especially if Drew Brees has another bad game, which he probably won't. He's such a good player. But I think I'm going to take Todd Gurley over this one, and I think Todd Gurley's also on the better team, which helps. Defensive Player of the Year, there's so many players I could get this. Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, even... One of the Cowboy linebackers I could see get this, honestly. They've been playing amazing. They're probably the best duo in the NFL, like I said earlier. But I'm going to go with Khalil Mack. He's on a great Bears defense, and he's done great this year. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give this one to Khalil Mack for now. This could change later, to depending on who does good and who does bad. But lastly, we're going to talk about the playoffs real quick. Who do you think is going to finish number one seed in the NFC and AFC? Uh, NFC right now. NFC right now is looking like the Rams. The Saints may catch a late run and the Rams slip up, but it's going to be the Rams right now. And in the AFC, uh, I'm going to go Chiefs. Uh, okay. For the NFC, I have the Saints. I just they had that big loss against the Cowboys, but I mean if they had a they've had a fire lit under them since. The, ever since that little close game they had in the beginning of the year with the Browns. Now, I actually believe the Chiefs will slip up. And I, th I think okay. that the Patriots could actually steal a number one seed. Mm -hmm. I could see that happening too. Uh, I'm going to go with Saints. I think the Rams are going to lose another game before the playoffs. And I think the Saints are going to win out. And the Saints beat the Rams. Uh, so I think the Saints are going to take that number one seed in the NFC spot. But AFC... I also agree with Kyle. I think the Patriots could take this one over the Chiefs. I think they slip up again. They could lose this week. They're playing the Ravens, a great defense. So I guess we'll just have to see what happens. This has been our latest episode of the J&J &J Show. I've been Jake. And I'm Jason. And we hope to see you next week. Thank you for tuning in.